Okay, so Splatoon 3's new season is finally here, and with it comes some new weapons, a new stage, some new game modes, and finally some well-deserved changes to weapons and specials to make the user experience that much more enjoyable for all the little teamies around the world. But honestly, who cares about all those new things? Because they finally brought back this! That's right, the Forge Spluttershaw Pro has finally made its grand return to Squid Games for the third time, sporting a new sleek and modern look on top of having a whole new and amazing kit. And as the self-proclaimed Splattershot enthusiast, I have taken it upon myself the role of learning upon ye new Squid Kids everything there is to know and not know about the Prime Shooter collab and why you should probably pick it up. So right off the bat, the Forge Pro is completely identical in terms of stat to its brother, the vanilla Splattershot Pro. Both weapons are middleweight class weapons with normal mobility speed and an average ink consumption of 2 ink percents per shot. And both weapons are also known for having an initial shot that comes out on frame 3 with each consecutive shot coming out every other 8 frames. And with each shot doing a max of 42 damage and a minimum of 21 fall off damage. Now, what both weapons lack in terms of painting and fire rate, they definitely make up for in terms of range, damage, and kits. In the very first Splatoon game, the Forge had a very weird Slayer kit, with point sensors allowing it to flush out opponents, and Inzuka kind of being a limited range extender to its kill range. This was changed in the second game where it lost its kit in favor of a more supportive one consisting of Suction Bomb and Bubble Blower, which in my opinion is definitely what helped set this weapon apart from its vanilla counterpart. This new kit allowed the Forge to play a more supportive role while still allowing it to keep all its slaying properties, becoming sort of a weird mixed support slayer set. Suction bombs allowed the weapon to now weed off opponents much better and cover areas it couldn't before in turn buffing its paint. The new special also allowed it to play defensively as well as aggressively if needed thanks in part to the bubble bomb instapop combo. All this on top of its 3 shot kill time, decent mid range pressure and synergy with other specials and weapons allowed the Forge Pro to really make a name for itself early on in Splatoon 2. Too bad that didn't last long as it was effectively replaced by a full squeezer not that long after release. Which not only had nearly identical stats as the Forge Pro, but had a longer effective range and an even better bubble pop combo. And if that wasn't bad enough, towards the end of Splatoon 2's life, they completely nerfed the bubble pop combo, making it harder to use without investing in a slot object shredder. And then MPU came out, and it finally faded into obscurity with the release of its more popular Slayer counterpart, the Kenza Pro, whose kit made better use of the Pro stat and just worked better with a lot of the meta weapons at the time. But that was Splatoon 2, what about Splatoon 3? How does the Forge hold up now in a new game with no MPU, smaller stage design, and a whole new kit? Well, first impressions wise, I'm honestly in love with the Forge. Taking inspiration from its sister, the Kenza Pro, the combination of suction and Booyah Bomb allowed the Forge Pro to once again play aggressively but still remain a solid supportive weapon when needed. In turn, the Forge has now once again changed roles and is now a solid anchor slash support weapon. Suction Bombs allow it to pivot between checkpoints and main objectives as well as check flanks and paint which can be good for helping hold or break pushes. And Booyah Bomb is a solid special that allows it to play an even more proactive role by delaying offensive pushes from the opponent. And while I personally would have preferred it got something like Trizuka or Wavebreaker as a special in order to further distinguish it from the Vanilla Pro as a purely support weapon, the kit itself isn't that bad, and even without it, the weapon is still very solid. Especially with this game's smaller map design, both Splattershot Pros can make use of their range and damage to pick off weaker opponents in bad positioning, with the Forge Pro having a slight edge in my opinion because of how well its kit allows it to survive in situations it normally wouldn't. That being said, while I'm personally biased towards this weapon, I don't really see it being everyone's cup of tea. For one, there are already plenty of other weapons in the game that share a lot of the same stat and roles as the Forge, with some of them even having better kits. For example, the Squeezer and Doom Sculpture both share the same territory as the Forge Pro, and both excel in various ways over the weapon in many aspects. With the Squeezer, its combination of longer range plus wall allow it to be a better anchor, 
And with the Squelchies, they're just better support weapons thanks in part to their mobility and ability to charge Wavebreaker relatively fast. On top of that, the Forge Pro does have some pretty bad weaknesses. For one thing, the weapon's inability to turf should honestly not be undersold. Trust me when I say this, if you play this weapon, you better pray your teammates can paint, cause this weapon cannot turf. And this also isn't aided by the fact that Suction Bomb is quite the ink hungry sub. But, if you want to pick up a strong weapon that allows you to play a pseudo supporter role while still allowing you to drop 20 plus kills per game, then by all means, play the Forge Pro. And yes, while the weapon itself might have a steeper learning curve than most shooters, and while there may be other weapons out there that do what it does better, if you want a solid and straightforward pick up and play weapon that can be used in almost all situations without that much change here and there, then this right here is the weapon for you. Pick it up. Play the Forge Pro. You'll look good playing it. It looks good. You'll look good. But when people see you, they'll be like, hey, that's the guy that plays the Forge Pro. He's nice. He's nice. You're nice. I'm nice. I'm playing the Forge Pro, and you should play Forge Pro.